Hey fam, welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So for my book lovers out there, this is another book review on this book right here. How to Be Found by the Man You've Been Looking For by Michelle Hammond. I love this book. And actually, um, I chose this book because... I like the title, number one, but also because the young lady who is writing this book currently, um, she's actually not married. So she's actually in this situation herself. And so I thought that that was a great idea to do. And, and she's actually practicing these very things, these very tips, these very tools that she's actually showcasing and sharing with you guys. This is actually a very quick read. It actually has 157 pages and she literally goes to the very end with this book, but it, it's very short, very straight to the point, has many, many facts in it. There are several questions in here that she has um, for you to think about when you're thinking about love. So I'll just read those to you. Are you really ready for the love you think you want? What is your matter? What is your motivation for deserving a committed love relationship? What problems do you think love will solve in your world? That one is, that's a great one. What are you prepared to give in order to get the love that you desire? Are you willing to make changes in your world to accommodate the man you love? Do you know what you want in a man? Do you know what you should want in a man? Are your expectations of love realistic? And if you never found a mate, would you still be able to lead a happy and fulfilled life? Those are really great questions to ask yourself when you're out here waiting for Mr. Right to choose you. I also have to say that um, this is just a side note for you fellas out there. It seems that I read a lot of books about, um, you know, in regards to women. So if there is a book out there that you want me to review and, you know, read it and review it, definitely leave it down in the comment section below because I know that I have been reading a lot of books geared toward women. Um, but it's not on purpose. It's just really those are the books that actually capture my attention. Now, I have done book reviews um, for books on men, but I will say that I don't really see them a whole lot as well. So don't think that I'm being biased on purpose. Okay. So if you have a book out there that you want me to read, definitely list it down below because I would love to do that. And again, you guys know that I love to read. So I love to see the inside and hear the inside of what you guys have to say. Okay. <laughs> anyway, getting back to the book, she definitely has these areas in here called man facts. Can you see that? Is it going to focus? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So man facts. And this particular one actually says worldly men have no problem dating church girls. They find them a delightful challenge, but just remember their intentions do not match yours. And then she has areas in here called personal confessions, which are her own personal confessions. The yeah, that, yeah. Okay. And so this one particularly says, I will not cast blame, but will take responsibility for my decisions and mistakes, being honest with God and myself. So she talks about a lot of things in here. And I know that this is a different type of book review, but um, I have so many highlighted areas in this book that I could just literally turn to a page and read it to you because there are just so many things that she talks about in this book. So let me just tell you what the titles are since this is a different type of book review and I am well aware of that. So there are 12 titles in this book. The first one is Love Hunger. The second one is The Land of Do It Yourself. The third one is Love at Any Cost. The fourth, The Winds of Change. Number five, Knowing Your Season. Number six, Making Life Work. Number seven, recognizing the man of your dreams. Number eight, turning the tide. Number nine, a woman of virtue. Ten, where the rubber hits the road. Eleven, paying the cost to be. Number eleven is paying the cost to be the boss. And number twelve is the end of the matter. So what I want to do is go ahead and um, take it from making your life work. And it basically talks about the first rule uh, I'm reading. Okay. <laughs> what have you been sowing and what are you harvesting at present? What do you have to offer a man? And so 
She's saying the first rule in discerning if your new man is your Boaz is to see what his harvest looks like. If it is all drama and accumulation of unfruitful relationships and dreams that are nowhere near coming true, he is not ready to be in a committed relationship to you. He should be in the harvest season of his life and have good fruit to show for it. Spiritual fruit as well as physical fruit. He comes into your life as a confident man because he knows he has something to offer, a safe place to rest your heart and the means to make provision for you. As women, we should be equally fruitful, cultivate a rich abundance of the fruit of the spirit, which is kindness, goodness, patience, gentleness, faith, love, joy, peace, humility, and self-control. But what about the external stuff? How does your savings account look? What does your home look like? Are you a woman who is prepared to be a wife, to make a house a home, and to add to a household the riches of your own assets? Assets. Be what you want to attract. So true. Be what you want to attract. If you want a together man, then be a together woman. Now is the time to prepare yourself to become the best you that you can be. Do not do this just for a man. Let me repeat that. Do not get yourself together just for a man. Do it for yourself. God has promised man that when he finds a wife, she will be a blessing and will add to his life and not subtract. Represent and represent well. So those are the type of things in here that she has a lot of great things to say. I mean, she really does. This one is from Knowing Your Season. What seeds are you planting in order to get the life and the love you want? Perhaps this is your season for self-development. What dreams have you put on reserve? Hoping a relationship will save you from. Are you waiting to be rescued, carried off to an exciting life? Perhaps the man you would want to be exciting to you would not be excited by you because you are not doing anything for yourself. The key to attracting what you want is being what you want to attract. Remember, a man wants to be your hero, but he certainly does not want to be your oxygen. That means you have to get busy. You have to have a fulfilling um, life and activities already going on in your life. Now is the time to cultivate your interests and your gifts. Take full advantage of your freedom. You will never have more financial freedom or more time than right now. Spend it wisely, cultivating a well-rounded and fascinating life. Do not pursue different activities based on if there will be a man that you can meet. Select what you true select what truly intrigues you. It is the best way to meet people who have similar interests. Amen to that. I mean, like, really? She said she said a whole mouthful in just that statement. And there are many things to consider um, just from that statement. Again, you do not want to do these things just because a potential man could be there, like football. And so a lot of women, they don't like football, right? And so what they'll do is they'll try to fake it, go out to the bar, and get into the presence because they know that at this bar scene or at this sports bar or whatever, there are going to be a lot of men there. And so they try to fake the funk. And by the time they talk to the guy, the guy is like, I mean, she don't even know what she's talking about. <laughs> and he's turned off with you because you were pretending to like football instead of just walking up to him and be like, hey, I'm really not into football, but what's going on? Like, can you explain the game of football to me? I've been wanting to understand and learn some things about football. Can you do that for me? So instead of being straightforward and to the point, you're basically trying to play, and then you play it yourself. All right, the last and final piece that I'm going to read to is a little lengthy, so just be patient with me. This one is from Where the Rubber Hits the Road. Now, I have to say, her titles of her actual um, chapters, to me, they suck, but... <laughs> But be, I wanted to make sure that I'm reading from some of these so you can get a better idea of what the book is about versus her titles, because I don't think that her titles really tell you what's actually in that section. So this one is a little lengthy, but it's basically um, it's from where the rib, where the rubber hits the road. And then the subsection is taking care of you and yours. So basically, I'm going to give you the backstory. She's basically talked about how you should be a Proverbs 31 woman. If you don't know what that is, you can look it up. This is a very detailed description uh, where it was 
crystal clear picture of what her spirit and heart really look like. You can be a you could be on good behavior for only so long before you reveal who you are and it begins to surface into your attitudes towards yourself as well as towards other people. So ladies, rest assured that you're actually being watched. And then she gives a few reasons on, on a, a few things that you should do, okay, to get your package all together. So the first thing is to be resourceful. Um, there's a fine line between being self-sufficient and knowing when to accept help. A man does stop to consider if a woman can handle life if something happened to him and he was not able to be there for her and his family. I mean, would she be a survivor and able to take care of the family, family or would she become a victim, paralyzing her entire family in the midst of their circumstances? So things that he would consider. And it signals to him that life with you will not be one emergency after, uh, after the other. Together, you will be able to implement plans for the future and see them, um, see them through to fruition. Which actually brings me to the second point, which is wisdom. A man wants a woman in his life who brings something to the relationship intellectually. He wants a thinking partner, not a bossy partner, not one who knows everything and is never wrong, not one who always talks and never listens. He wants a thinking woman with grace. He wants someone he can plan his life with and receive wise counsel from during the times when he is not quite sure which way to go. He will be willing, he, he will be watching how you live your life and function in the midst of everyday chaos, how you rationalize situations that may be trying or difficult. Though no man desires a woman who thinks she is smart and will not let anyone forget it, wisdom actually is very important to him. Even in the course of natural conversation, a typical man is stimulated by a woman who is enlightening, who has enlightening things to say. Isn't it interesting that in most cases where a husband runs off with another woman, it is because he finds her to be more a, to be a more stimulating partner, not just sexually, but mentally as well. He feels he's finally met his equal, someone he can really talk to, someone who respects his ideas and thinks he is wonderful. She walks the walk by loving and serving him. And she... she she actually, <laughs> this part is actually funny because she addresses the word serve. Okay, so this is the next sentence. Okay, somebody just hyperventilated when she got to the word serve. A truly wise woman knows how to make a man feel like a king. She knows that the quickest route to getting him to treat her like a queen is to treat him like a king. She pays attention to his needs and makes him feel important in her universe. To a man, this translates to unconditional support. Un to a man, this translates to unconditional support by cheering him on when he does things right and seeking ways to cater to his needs. His Need may be as simple as you just sitting there listening to him. A wise woman also knows the power of praise and attentiveness. She listens and understands that what he says is valid and reality to him, whether she feels it is important or not. She is strong but soft at the same time because she has mastered the art of being a woman. Like I said, this book has a lot of great information in it. I must say that the only downfall for me is that I hate her titles of her chapters because it really doesn't match up to the meat that she has within Say It chapters. But I definitely will give it two thumbs up from Marshawn Olanio. I definitely recommend that you go ahead and pick up this book by Michelle Hammond, which is again, how to be found by the man you've been looking for. It doesn't say go out there and search for him yourself, especially if you are a Christian, you know that the man should find you. And as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, if you are searching and seeking him out, you will be doing that your entire relationship.